I'm recording now. Hey, this is Pastor Jay Walker Truth Christian Fellowship Church and Walker Truth Radio Podcast. I have on the phone with me Sister Tanika Drake, author extraordinaire and all around great woman of God. And we are fired up today. We are fired up yes. today. We thank God for King Jives and an interview. It'll be posted in the in the in the uh, description. But we're going to talk about again because I think it needs to be really exposed. Church hurt, church molestation, church abuse, all falls under the umbrella of domestic violence. Because mm-hmm. you think about it. Because Tanika, say hi to everybody. Hey everyone. You know, you think about it, sister. It's 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 one of those things. Whereas domestic violence is intimacy. You know, two people or have an intimate relationship, and one goes rogue or violent towards the other. Well, church and and relationship to the clergy is the same way. You you look at these people as your father. You look mm-hmm. at these people as your husband. You look at the people as your wife. You know, we got female. You know, mother and yeah. and and truly, what we've heard with this guy, uh, Jimmy, is normative you know what I'm saying this is not so diff- so strange and you have these name brand pastors and bishops that the, that we prop up you know they couldn't be where they are unless we put them there and we find out that they have been sexually spiritually emotionally and physically abusing uh-huh. our children our women and our men and these people are so damaged, and I don't mean damaged in a negative way. They have been impacted so great that it takes them years to come out. Mm-hmm. And when Jimmy said when he when he started talking about the story, he just started crying. This man is in his, almost in his fifties. Yep, and that's happened some decades ago. You know, this happened when MC Hammer Pants was out. Yes, he <laughs> you know, that's how it's like. Wow, but you but. But again, they get mad at me and you when we say you need to come out of these rat hole churches. These rat hole churches that are abusing people. I mean, I mean, where where do we I mean, how much crying out do we have to do before somebody wakes up? I think we got to keep on crying until somebody hears because for for me, when you're when you're talking about domestic violence and you're talking about abuse, that's a huge umbrella. Some people just want to see the physicality of getting hit and stuff, and that's a part of it. But when you think about domestic violence and abuse, church is a very huge place for spiritual abuse. Okay, and having a pastor, anybody in clergy who is important and has some kind of some kind of authority that you have this going on and that you leave your child or even as a woman or a man, you go to the spiritual person that you believe is upright and holding the standards of the Lord according to the word and you are abused, but you're not going to say anything because this is a person that you revere and we're not supposed to put people on pedestals, but we see that the person is supposed to be doing the work of the Lord. So they say, so, you know, in Corinthians in the fifth chapter, and I'm always is going to this when it's talking about anyone who calls himself a brother but is sexually immoral we have so much sexual immorality within our church it's turning people out in such a way you can't escape it and you leave your little children and your daughters your sons with these people and then you wonder what happens to them so I'm going to say this any kind of abuse within our churches has to be dealt with you cannot continue to brush it under the rug and act like it doesn't exist And I remember when I went to a church and the pastor straight up said this, I watched a husband come and rip his wife out of the church, drag her out of the church with her hair. That was the best advice he was watching. Pulled her out of the chair, down the stairs, and guess what? He took her in the car, took her home. Did anybody stop him? Did anybody call the cops? No, they did not. They let it go on. That's his business. That's his wife. Nobody intervened. I don't know what it is about the black African American churches where we think it's okay to let that stuff slide. Don't call the authorities and think that you're going to put it up the hierarchy of the bishops to deal. The bishops and these churches and the clergy are not equipped to handle this. Authorities need to be called and people need to stop shutting their mouth and listen to these first ladies and all these people. Girl, I wouldn't be talking about that. Shut up. You need to talk 
talk about it because more people are going to be damaged and hurt if you don't say something. Stop this quietness. Stop this being yeah. quiet and letting people abuse you. Stop it. It's almost like the cold blue silence thing that police do, but it's a, it's in the church. Like I would say, cold blacks is all wear black robes. It's like once yeah. you get to that level, there's a thing. Whereas, you know, again, out of context, don't touch my anointing, do my prophet no harm. They are not a prophet of God if they're abusing people in any form or fashion. And and, right. and th- look how sick this is. We're not talking about the pastor that goes out and has normal sex or whatever you want to call it with somebody who's willing like a you know with no pressure or, you know r- you know fair exchange is not robbery consensual. you know it's yeah. consensual adults mm-hmm. he's not using his position or her position is you know we got to say both now their position yeah. to manipulate you into a position to where you feel not only you submit to them spiritually but that spiritual abuse always end up you notice this in the cults that spiritual abuse always end up in sexual abuse a hundred percent of the time uh-huh. because that's where they gain c- true control over you. Not only have I controlled your mind, but now it's I control your body. Your body. Huh? Yeah. And for you to get along, get along, grow and be appointed, promoted, uh, uh, raised up. You have to do what I say. And we're not going to even go with financial abuse because we know that's there. But the, the sad part about it is the people in the church, and I'm going to say this with all sincerity, if you want to see a, a, a pastor getting over, all you got to do is see the fact that when he does do something, who comes to his defense 99% of the time is the women in the church. Yeah, the women do. Uh-huh. The women will come and, and, and boy, because they've got the mouth and the neck and the They'll, they'll, they will tamp that thing down because they love their pastor. They've been taking their kids there. Look what, look what King Jive said when he reported to his mama. His mama smacked him in the mouth. Mm-hmm. His mom. Because she didn't want to hear how, that. How, 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 how many pastors? I mean, I, I man, let me tell you something, uh, people. Y'all better wake up. You better wake up. Because you're joining church to wear it like a label, like a sports team. You know, you're joining church so you can have, oh, I go to the greatest church in this area. But you might be going to the house as, as, as they house of horrors. Mm-hmm. You might be going to the house of abuse. You're look here. I'm leaving this church who's teaching sound doctrine so I can go to another church that has a whole bunch of children's programs and you drop your children off so you can do what you want to do. And then you find out 10 years later that that same youth pastor, that same choir director, that same deacon that you love so much, that same pastor has abused your son and your daughter. And you wonder why your daughter or son is turned out and have same sex attractions, which they never showed before. It's because you done left them right in the hands of the predator that will never be exposed. And when you hear about it, you don't get inquisitive. You get angry at them because maybe you've climbed up the ladder, too. Mm-hmm, you want to sacrifice your child. You know, think, oh, think about what we just said. You sacrificed your child. Child, that goes mm-hmm. back to the, the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Where the Jews used to sacrifice their children to Moloch. Mm-hmm. You're in church with Moloch and you sacrifice your children and you don't care because you've been given a title. You've been given a, a position. position. You, you, <laughs> you've been, you've been made right. co-pastor, co-deacon, junior pastor. All these titles that are not in scripture. And I noticed what Jimmy said. He realized at some point that this pastor, his female pastor that he was following, and I'm just giving that clarification for clarification's sake. The female pastor that he was following didn't know nothing. Wasn't scriptural. Wasn't biblically literate. They knew how to do the gift of God and do church, church, do church mode. Church lingo. Uh-huh. Church lingo. And see, and now you have a uh, Bishop Bloomer come along and he has more than hooping and hollering. He has some logic, some psychological logic to it. And that boy became attractive to that and really wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, he's in the man's hotel room with the man putting this in his mouth. 
how many how, how many people and then you blame the victim oh god let me tell you something stop it first ladies pastors bishops apostles i'm talking to y'all y'all who have spouses when your spouse is causing hell in the church don't tell the victim it's not what she or he does to you. It's what you respond back to them. You have just told that person that this victimizer can continue to rain hell in your church and you don't want it. You don't want it exposed. I came from a church like that, even to the point the church is done. And now you have the one who has victimized so many people trying to rewrite history as if, if I tell enough people the lie, then I'll feel better about what happened. And I'm going to tell that person, and if they keep on doing it, I'm going to expose you. You need to just shut up. You need to quit telling that lie. And you know what lie you're telling. But you have victimized so many people. There are people that will not go to church because of your your leadership. Yes. They've thrown God out the window. And I'm just begging people, don't throw God out the window. These people are not God's people. These people They're are most. yeah, these people are not God's people. These people are not God's people. These people are charlatans. These people are wolves in sheep's clothing. These people yeah. are not the church of Jesus Christ at all. That's right. They're not the real deal. You know, they're not who the, they're not who they portray to be. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to do black church. But you got to be spiritual enough and sit long enough to see if it's church as usual or it's God's church. Or just traditions of men. Or just traditions of men, which God doesn't like. Right. Dead works. Dead mm -hmm. works from dead people. And you think you're going to go to God with the label of your church and say, well, I went to the most popular church in my area. And he's going to say, you know what? Get away from me. I never knew I never you. knew you. Come on. <laughs> All because any signs are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I've heard it even with our church. You know, well, when you gonna have some children's programs? When we go? No, we no. Okay, listen to this. What about this? <laughs> I just want to have programs that go out and evangelize, and I want the children and adults to do it together. Right. Nobody doing nothing. Nobody separate. doing nothing separate, so we can all watch right. over each other. If yes. I can't, if there's a sermon I preach that children can't hear, I don't need to be preaching it. Mm-hmm. That's our problem. We keep trying to get away from the responsibility. We didn't have these babies. We didn't have these children. And you, because you didn't have them and you don't have no discipline in your family and they won't sit still, you want to shuffle them off <coughs> down to the basement. You wanna, so yeah, you can you get the word. Off. So now the churches, and like I say, not all churches, but too many. One is too many. You're sending them right into the fire. You're sending your wife, you're telling your wives to talk to these pastors. And and, and, and I noticed what what, the, what 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 King John said. You got these men, bishops, who are homosexual, but know that black church doesn't really accept that, even though they're in the church and they marry these women. And and then you find out that this woman catches something that she ain't supposed that she didn't plan on getting. She's wondering where she got it from. It's because her husband has been sleeping with a whole bunch of men and then she has to make a decision. Does she want to expose him or does she want to keep her title and her lofty living? And what I right. see, majority of the time, what they choose, the lofty living. They want to keep the lofty living. Uh-huh. You know, okay. I mean, this domestic abuse is crazy. And it's so, it is so, it's so big. I wish people would understand that domestic violence and abuse it's not just related to two intimate people inside of their household. It is anybody who has an intimate relationship with another person. So we can say it doesn't even matter if it's a husband and wife. 
It could be a pastor and a congregate. It could be someone at your job as the boss of you and that they have a, some kind of authority, some kind of power that allows them to abuse you. At, at, at whatever level they are at, you are subjected to their abuse, whether it's sexual, whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, whether it's verbal, mental, whatever authority that they have, they are using it over you. So when we say about domestic violence and abuse, it's a huge, massive umbrella, and it's everywhere. And for our church, which is one of those breeding grounds that because it is created the way it is, it leaves you vulnerable, you open yourself up is to be vulnerable to someone that you trust. And when you do that, you open the door to the predator, and here that person comes. Like we've just, the Pastor Jay just said, it's not all churches, but when you're vulnerable in that place, you're going to go and worship you're going to go be vulnerable because you want to get close to the Lord. Then you have that pastor, that person, the woman or man come to you and they catch you in your vulnerability. Yeah. You're not going there to go <clears throat> put yourself in abuse. That's not why you're going to church. But however, those wolves, those those people are there because just like anything else, there are some huge bad apples that see this as a playground of a place for predators and we are here to prey on you. So when you go to church, I hope you're sitting there with discernment i hope you're being wise and know who you should talk to and who you shouldn't you should not expose yourself to everybody and just listen to certain people when you are with them yeah. and you should take somebody with you whenever yeah. you go to these pastors i would not be going with any pastor by myself and you know what and these pastors are apex predators they know when that person comes in and has mm -hmm. issues going on in their home, issues going on in their life, issues yeah. with the opposite sex, issues with the same sex, feeling convicted, down, despair, disillusioned about everything in their life, and they and they smell the blood in the water. Yeah. They smell the blood in the water. And then the most dangerous and I'm, this saints, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this for to protect you. There's no such thing as altar call in scripture. Mm. Read about how Paul and Peter and preached the word and people got convicted and got saved. It's by the preaching of the word, but altar call in itself is not bad. But I know from watching, paying attention, because thank God I got exposed to stuff and learned what not to do. And altar call is one of the most dangerous moments in church because now you're being called up close to the predator. Not only have you heard them, but now they're going to touch you. Now they're going to lay their hands on you. And there's power in a touch. And you went up there feeling some way and somehow or another because of the touch of the ear, the touch of the face, the kiss on the face, the kiss close to the lips, the bringing of one hugging uh, body parts one to another. All of a sudden you went from one kind of emotion to arousal. Mm -hmm. And now you don't know, You're now you're really confused because why am I feeling attracted to this person? Jesus ain't in the picture no more. Right. Now it's this person and this person is a, now, now if I feel this way towards this person and then they're a conduit to God, I, I, should I not submit to this person? Should I not? I, I'm feeling bad and this person just made me feel kind of good. Yeah. So now the shark smells, this, senses your reaction, and then all of a sudden he gets one of the mothers to get your phone number. And give you or a one call, of the deacons huh? to get your phone number. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're setting up this conversation on the phone. And over the phone, they're not talking uh, like a man, a woman, a God, they talking the street. They talking, you know, they talking down the earth street with you. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're going to have a meeting with them. And see, this will, hey, this is going to be part of my, uh, my, my video thing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. What I'm talking about. Next thing you have a meeting with them. And next thing you know, your shoes are under somebody else's bed. Mm. And that man or woman of God's, <laughs> is sitting there that took advantage of you and you don't know how to get out of it now because you did like it on one end but you know you weren't supposed to do it on the other end and then you find out 
that you are in a cycle that you cannot, you, you don't want to expose them because they threatened you that if you expose them, this is what will happen to you. You don't know what to do. You know you can't go to nobody in the church because if you go to the wrong person, you really going to be blocked. Yeah. You're going to be ostracized, called a whore, whole, whatever. And and now from you went from the victim to being being the purpose, person who tricked they pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Pastor Jay. Don't let it be during cuffing season. That's a whole nother thing. You go and go join a church in cuffing season. You already, emotions is already running high. You go and altar call. Oh, man. <laughs> and see, people think I'm crazy when I tell, like, you know, again, we have the same kind of people come in, broken people. And let's say it's a woman in particular. A woman in particular. I do not let men touch her. I tell the women, you, you know, if y'all want to go pray for her, do the thing where they surround you, do all that stuff, that's fine. Y'all go to that. Men, y'all stay back. Yeah, yeah. Stay back. Don't even get in the circle close. Because I know how this vibe work. Mm-hmm. You can pray from 50 feet away. You know what I'm saying? 20 yeah, feet away. stay back. <laughs> Point your hand. Mm-hmm. Same thing if it was a brother. I wouldn't let the women come touch him. Mm-hmm. But see, people think I'm crazy. No, I'm not. I'm 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 trying to keep everybody safe. Right, and prevent. I'm trying. I'm trying to deal with happen. the person on a spiritual level only. I am not trying to deal with them only. They're already emotional. They need some sound doctrine. Uh huh. They need some sound teaching. Mm hmm. Your pastor should not be calling you talking under your clothes. Right. Been there. Hold up. At service. And some people know what I'm talking about. At service. I'm in the pulpit with the big with the big bishops. I ain't nobody. I'm just I'm up in the pulpit. The praise team is out in front of us. There's the one, two, three, four visiting pastors. Bishops, whatever you want to call these. Uh -huh. oh, let me calm down. Whatever you want to call these people. And the women, I think about this, the women on the praise team are facing the pews. So their backsides are to the bishops. Mm. They're singing and jiggling, jiggling and singing. Now, they're not doing nothing. Uh, other, and let me say this. These women are just enjoying singing for the Lord. They're not doing nothing salacious. It's just, you know, but they see the backside moving, okay? That's their body shape, uh huh. Okay. Now they lean, one leans over to the other. Hey, Doc, who's that? Y'all, folk, church folk, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all that's been on the inside, y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, Doc, who's that? Oh, that's sister so and so and so. Mm. Uh, I like to see her at the service. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. So now that visiting preacher, if, it, if he's the preacher, preacher, the one's going to get the little message. You'll find that eventually somewhere in the service, he'll make a, a eye contact with that person that he wants a couple of times. He may even call them by name. He may even, and if they make a mistake and come to altar call, he going to be the one who deal with her. Mm. Now, fast forward hour later, all back in the office. Uh, here she come. And I'm warning her. This is not them doing anything holy with you. This is trying to size you up. Now, she may decide that's the way she want to roll. I mean, you know, but the fact that the point for the back office is not to speak men of God speaking things of God, but now the men of God are speaking things of the flesh. And it's like one big party to see which female is going to crack. I know of a situation where the pastor in his youth slept with the mama and now that he's older, he really wants to sleep with the daughter. Oh, gosh. Now, challenge me. Now, this is what I'm saying. Don't play with me, people. Don't play with me. Okay? Don't text me and call me and ask me who. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Okay? Yes, it's old, it's gone, but the fact that, you know, 
And again, I'm not talking about adult, you know, we're not talking about adult relationships. We're talking about using your position of authority to try to convince somebody to sleep with them. You know, even in corporate world, that's not acceptable. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking about something that's odd. Uh, look what happened to what's the, uh, uh, the dude that's sitting in NBC. Using his, Matt, Lauer. Matt Lauer using his position, well, a whole bunch of them, using their position of authority to sleep with somebody. Right. You know, using them wanting to come up the ladder, you know, what, what, what we we thought the casting couch was something they did back in the 1950s. No, the casting couch exists and it exists inside the church too. Just I've seen people who want to be accepted in the hierarchy of the church so bad that they write checks that they know they shouldn't even write only because not for the Lord. It's because they want to be restored and put back in place. I've seen that too. Mm -hmm. I've seen the character of people decimated and then, like I say, it's not what you do. I mean, in, in the bishop's office crying tears about violations that if you were on the street, you beat somebody up over that the first lady then did. That if this was a street thing, it would be on and popping. But because the person respects the church, tries to respect the leader, come to the leader, and the leader with a straight face say, what did you do? Nothing. Well, it's not what you do. It's not what they did to you. It's what you do to them. And you're sitting there like, so you're not going to say nothing to the perpetrator, which may happen to be the first lady or deacon or whomever. Nope. I want you to be, I want you to be the bigger Christian. So what you're saying is you want the victim to be the bigger Christian as the victimizer doesn't have to be Christian at, at all. And there's no accountability. Oh, sounds like some families. <laughs> no accountability whatsoever. What church is a family? Yeah. And it feeds off the head, and, and if the head is afraid, inept, or incapable of ruling their house, then you'll have this kind of craziness going on. Uh -huh. You know, when you're chasing members so you can pay the bill, see, the, see all, see, some of this stuff feed off into other stuff. Like, if if overhead is such that I need all these people, guess what? I'm liable to look look away. From abuse. Because think about it, if the abuser is writing big checks, which, which, what, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I know what I'm supposed to do, but what but they're thinking is what am I supposed to do? I got a mortgage to pay. I want my salary. This person writes enough for my salary and the mortgage. Do I want to get rid of them because they may, you know, do a little stuff? I'll just try to keep them, you know, I'll have a talk with them and I'll try to keep them under control. But the minute you have a talk with them and you don't do something disciplinary towards them, they already know that they in charge. Mm hmm because they write that money to you. They already know that you're, so, you're such a coward, you're such an inept leader that you will not call them to the carpet. Right. It's not what they you what the a victimizer has done. It's what the the victim do after that. Expose them. Again, we not talking about see. And again, we're talking about abuse of power. We're not talking about uh, relationships like you know uh, uh, necessarily you know uh, cheating and that kind of thing. We're not talking about that. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about you use your office to manipulate, control, and abuse people, and it's spiritually, mentally, and sexually, and financially. Because normally, once they get you spiritually and sexually, the next thing they're coming for is your money. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it could be in, in any order now. It doesn't see the order doesn't have to be that. It could be money first. It could be money first. Then, then spiritually, then, then emotionally, you know, then sexually, it could, you know, or it could be sex first. It, it just depends on how the shark know that you roll. See, some right, of these, they study you. They yeah, study. they ha think about that. I tell people this. It's true. Your pastor is, is like a shepherd. And he knows you. He knows he watches you. He studies you. He knows what you'll take. 
He'll know what you won't take. They'll, they know. They spend a whole bunch of time trying to figure out how to get you, not how to get you closer to God. And see, that's the one thing about black church that's quite interesting because when you have the option to be free, you're so used to being under that tyranny of bondage and control, you don't even know how to be free. You don't know how when the pastor say, read it for yourself. <laughs> you don't know what it's like when the pastor say, no, -uh, I didn't told you the truth. I didn't taught you the truth. Now it's between you and the Holy Spirit. You don't know how to handle that. Because you say you want to be free. But freedom comes with being accountable and responsible for your own actions. And there's a part of you that loves to have somebody else to blame. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a sick cycle. You know, when are you going to stand up and take responsibility for yourself and your own relationships in a situation where you're being manipulated? Tanika, how do you get out of something like that? I mean, how did you get out of your situation? Have you ever been abused in church? Um, I haven't been abused in church. I have been pressed up on um, as far as like the first lady trying to throw her weight around to let me know who's in power and who's in charge. And when it comes to that, because this first, you know, before I even knew what the first lady title was made up, I just try to respect her in her lane. So there was an incident where they were doing some kind of special program. She needed $25 from everyone. Well, I didn't have the money. So she comes to me at the door and says, hey, did you give me, you're going to give me your $25? I said, no. She's like, uh, did you not get the memo? I said, I got the memo, but I don't have the money. So what do you want from me? And she's like, oh, okay. I just like try to strong arm you to give money you don't have. So she look at you funny, you know, and anything you do when it comes to money, they're looking at you. So when you try to get out of that stuff, you just have to leave the church. Even if they have sound doctrine that they're teaching and it's biblical, certain things just don't jive with me. So when you hear those things, and you have to be willing to step away. You have to be willing to be the only one that's going to leave all those other sheep as everybody moves the same, does the same. You have to be the one that's going to separate yourself and let the Lord lead you out of there. Because if you're not going to listen to the Holy Spirit, what it's telling you to do, like this is not the place for you. Yeah, You got to go. Don't stay yeah. just because it's the thing to do. Don't stay. Yeah. And, and like I said, I want to make sure that people understand. Look in the description sec section. You'll see a link to... Uh, Tanika's show, podcast, God's gift through his word. You'll also, Tanika, tell them about the book you've written, about your own experience with domestic violence. Well, I did write a book called The Gift of Finding God's Love, Guilt and Shame, Turned Into My Shine. And um, that book talks about a lot about domestic violence and, and being trapped in that. And when I talk about in my story about being trapped, this is really for all those women and some men as well specifically for those in faith, we don't leave marriages and relationships, especially marriages, because we believe that we're in covenant. We don't leave because we don't want to dishonor the Lord. However, that husband or that wife who is already broken covenant by hurting you and abusing you is already breaking what the Lord has already said. So for some of us, we stay because we believe that we're doing the right thing and that we're honoring the Lord by being abused and staying in something like that and you're doing the totally opposite you're not helping yourself and I know there's some women that want to stay in these abusive relationships because number one they don't want to be alone number two they got kids they don't want to be a single mama nobody goes into a relationship married and want to come out be a divorcee and have be a single mom who wants that you got married so you want to stay that way so it takes a process and the Lord actually has to open your eyes and let you see and when you have someone to show you in the word what it says and they have to illuminate you into what you're reading because sometimes we read the word and we don't get an understanding but when somebody takes the time to say you know that's not what the word means when you get married that's not exactly how, how marriage is supposed to work he's not being the husband that is depicted in the word you have to go and search the scriptures for yourself and when you get that understanding then you can break free but it starts with your mind yeah everything starts with the mind yeah and you got to learn the difference between worshiping god through his word and worshiping man who's the servant of god see there's there's a whole different and again in black church we've taught to reverence and worship 
even the word reverend, we should never call a man reverend. And there's so many, I don't even want to go there biblically because I, because people will argue with me and they just ignorant of scripture. You should never call a man reverend. Only person who is worse, only person who is worse reverencing because that means fear, fearing with, 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 yeah, all, all, allness is God. And secondly, um, uh, using, you know, my, my pet peeve, I mean, just irks me when I hear the twisting of the word of God to manipulate people, to get them to give. And this one I'm going to use is to get them to give, give their money, give their time, give their talent, give their body, give their soul, give their sex. The word of God is not supposed to do that. You do not use the word of God to continue in sin. Romans, God forbid you do not use the grace that's in the word of God to control and manipulate people in any way. You're supposed to be setting them free from man, the devil and the flesh. And what these pastors are doing, they are manipulating them to be more controlled by the devil, more controlled by the flesh and more controlled by the world. And the people don't know it. And they get sucked in and they believe, I mean, that whole thing of armor bearers and all that church crap. Carry your own books. Carry your own water. See, all of that leads into this craziness. I'm not saying if your pastor needs help, don't help them. But don't set up a whole position like, oh, armor bearer. That's Jewish Old Testament stuff. And that was real war. One of the first signs we see of armor bearer is the fact that Goliath had an armor bearer. that carried his shield and his sword. So do you use that narrative to say, oh yeah, come on now, stop it. Come out of these rat hole churches. You may need to go to a smaller church where you can have the right intimate relationship with believers who really care for you and love you and a pastor who's teaching you the word of God line by line, verse by verse in context. Context, context, Context It's not about what you feel or what God is trying to or you, what you feel about what God is telling you in the scripture. God wrote it, had a specific reason to write it and a specific thing he wanted you to get. You need to get what they got before you try to figure out this thing with your little imagination or what it means to you. I mean, it is so amazing to me that I hear people talk about God's love. But their love, the way they look at God's love is no accountability, no responsibility, no discipline. That's not God's love. That's lust. Infatuation. That's lust. Love makes you accountable. Love makes you responsible. Love makes you disciplined. Love makes you committed. But we twist the word of God to do what we want to do and then say, I'm a work in progress. Again, I'm going to have some good videos on this stuff. I'm a work in progress. Yeah, you are, but you don't use the fact that you're in work in progress to continue in sin. God. On purpose. <laughs> on purpose. And the people are sitting here suffering in these churches year in, year out, going to this program, that program, going to this conference, all these, all the, and then uh, the biggest place where the shark get over on you at these, uh, Revivals and what they call them, deliverance services. Man, the fact that you walk through the door, you already saying that you hamburger meat. Yeah. yeah that's a fact. Deliverance. Come to the deliverance service. They're going to take your money. They're going to control your mind. And if possible, they're going to scan who they can have sex with that night. Right. If they have time for four days, they're going to want to get them some two or three days of the night. And if they raising a lot of money, that bishop, that pastor, whoever invited them, know they do this. <coughs> it might assign, now watch this, the church whore to go take care of, be it male or female, to go take care of that visiting uh, servant of Satan. Sad. And call it church. And then people don't want to come to church at all. I'm fighting out here trying to get people to come who loved God, like that guy, guy, guy Jimmy. Think about Jimmy. He loved God. Jimmy ain't in church now. As if we speak right now, maybe, I mean, as the interview, he was not back 30, 40 years later, he's still not in church. 
You know why? Oh, and he, he does. And he's using okay. words like the creator and God. He, you know, he doesn't want the Jesus that was he was exposed to, but that Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible, and that's not the gospel. And that's why I have why I try to tell people, don't lump in the Jesus of the Bible with bad teaching. It's the teacher. It's the teacher. It's the teacher. It's not the scripture. It's the teacher. And it's sad. And people are getting abused. So, Sister oh, Drake, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. And again, I guess we're going to discuss it on your show, too. What what do you want to... How, again, I, and, I, and, I, and I want you to try to think about this. I'm going to let you have the last word on this. The question I ask is, how do you get out? I mean, what... Even if you have to use your own process, how... You know, you're embedded, you're invested, you don't like it, but this is all you know. How do you get out? Okay, so for me, it probably will take a long time to talk about it, but I will say, and I'm going to continue to say that, you're, it has to start with your mind. And when I say that, I am going to say this, you're going to have to look at your situation, whatever situation it is whether it's a personal, fam familial, or it's in church. You've got to have to stop and objectively take yourself out of the situation and just look. Just look at what you're in and see, do you want to be treated like that for the rest of your life until you hit the grave? Is that what you want? Because if it is, then you're making that choice. If it is not, then you, during all of this process that you're looking, you're going to have to start developing a plan. You're going to have to come up with a plan and process. When it comes to church, church is a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier. It might not it might not feel that way, but it is a lot easier. When it comes to relationships of marriage, it's a lot more tricky, but you have to look objectively and start looking and set yourself a plan. And when you make that plan, you put it in your head. You don't have to write it down, but know what you want to do and then execute. Do not change anything. If you're planning to leave the church or your marriage, then do that. Don't go back. Don't, well, you know, don't second guess. Make your decision. Stick with that decision and press forward. God will guide you where you're going to go, even when you don't have a place to go, even when you don't know where you're going. Just let the Lord lead. That's what I'm going to say. Make a plan. Stick to your decision. Yeah. And with that, I want to thank you for, you know, man, you had these talks and I said we need to record some of this stuff. But uh, we need to continue to talk about church abuse. We need to continue to talk about domestic violence. We need to continue to talk about the things that people are going through, that relationships that are unhealthy. And I'm going to pray right now. I'm, Lord, I just ask that in 2020, as we're approaching the last couple of last week of two weeks of 2019, Lord, I ask that the people get enough strength courage and endurance to get out of these bad relationships no matter what they are be yes, it Lord. family friends, church whatever, if it's not healthy for them let them know that they can get out and they will be alright yes. they don't need anybody in their life that abuses them uses them, take advantage of them and puts them in a place where they don't even like themselves. So Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that this podcast, this broadcast, this word that we're going to go out in 2020, that we're going to tell people, you don't have to stay in that relationship just like sin. That relationship like sin should have no more dominion over you. I ask that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, Sister Tanika. Uh, don't hang up. We're, we're going to finish our conversation. Thank you for listening to Walk in Truth uh, podcast. Uh, also go over to uh, God's Gift Through His Word. Check it out. Awesome podcast. Uh, Larry Hunter's podcast. Five Minute Inspiration. Just so many podcasters. I can't uh, tell them all, but you know, what I want to do is just thank you for coming and uh, we will talk to you guys later. Say bye, Sister Drake. Bye, you guys. Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walk in Truth Radio Podcast, and I want to invite all those within the St. Louis metropolitan area and around the world to come worship with us 
every Sunday at 8 a.m. at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. We also have our Rescue Addiction Recovery Program on Mondays from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Our Bible studies are held every Tuesday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can also catch us, follow us, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Please come out and join us, follow us, follow our podcast, but most of all, get saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost, and always remember, walk in truth. And if you'd like to contact me by email, you can do so by going to Walk in Truth Ministries at yahoo.com or w i t m i n at yahoo.com. Thank you and bless you, and we look forward to worshiping and fellowshipping with you. Peace.